I thought Mrs. Capwell was in here. Uh, she was. She just wanted to uh, call her babysitter. Well, thank you. Perhaps I'll find her in the lounge. Dr. Mann, did you get the results back from the test? Well, that's what I came to speak to Mrs. Capwell about. Could you, could you just tell me that he's going to be all right? I'm afraid I can't tell you anything. Must be right. Oh, Dr. Mack, you're going to do some more tests on him, aren't you? I mean, you can't just let him lie there like that. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't discuss that with you. I have to talk to his wife first or a member of his family. I wish I knew what to say. Cece, I'm, I'm still your wife. Let me share this with you. Dr. Newman, Dr. John Newman, follow the service. Hi. 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 Uh, we flew back from San Francisco yeah, as soon as we I... could. Is there any word yet? No, we're still waiting for results from the test. Uh, um, are Mother and Daddy here? I saw your father, but I don't know about Sophia. Well, look, was, um, was my mother told about this? Yes, she was here. Everybody was arguing. You're lucky you weren't here. Well, can we, can we see Mason? Yeah, but we're going to all have to go in separately. The doctor doesn't want too many people in the room. Mm. Julia is in there now. Um, excuse me, I had to call Chips and Daddy. Yeah, no, go, go, go ahead. Minutes. Oh, I just hate it that the family is torn apart and fighting like this, Jesse. Well, maybe they're not. You cold? No. What's going on? Nothing. Just looking at all this beauty. You know, the sun setting and the sky going on forever. Sounds good. Sounds great. Looks wonderful, but I can't wait to get off this boat. Yeah, well, dodging bullets does tend to make one seasick sometimes. I like to think the danger's over. Doesn't feel that way, though, does it? No. Yeah, you know, I got bad vibes when I got on this boat, and they didn't go away when Andrew got thrown in the brig. As a matter of fact, they've gotten worse. Let's take a walk. After all this time, she... Oh. At least she's not armed anymore, huh? Andrew, how do we begin to apologize well, you to don't, you? don't, right? I handled the whole thing badly. Of course you suspected me. I would have reacted the same way. We apologize anyway. Thank God you're still around to hear it. You did what you had to do, Chris. Oh, thank God you're still alive. Look, she's getting desperate now. She knows I'm out to stop her. So you don't think she's given up on Espinosa? No way. If this woman gets off the ship, she'll head straight for him. Nothing short of a bullet is going to stop her from completing this mission. Attention, passengers. This is Captain Andrews. The Star Princess will be docking in Mazatlan in 30 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. That doesn't give us a lot of time. Uh, no, and this may just be our last chance. Hi, hi. I'm so glad you made it. Hi. Hi. I wouldn't miss this sight for anything in the world. What are you talking about? What? The two of you. I just... I... I'm sorry. You misunderstood. Your father and I were just trying to comfort each other, Kelly. Nothing's changed? Nothing. This is so crazy for the two of you to be angry with each other right now. Mother... What if it were Mother lying in there, Daddy? 
What would you do? I mean, I would think the one thing we would learn from this is how fragile our lives are. Maybe this is not the time. This is the perfect time, Daddy. We need each other, all of us. The family always sticks together in trouble like this. Usually we do. It just seems like uh, some capos are trying to uh, pursue their own agendas. Dr. Fox, Dr. Lewis Fox. Oh, how can you at a time Mother, like this? please. He has no right to sling mud at me after what you've done. I've done nothing to be ashamed of. Oh, I'm sure you think you don't. You storm out of that house so self-righteously, completely justifying deserting your family and <clears throat> shutting me out for Pamela. How long did you look for that justification, Cece, so you could run to her? I ran into no one, Sophia. Your lies pushed Will me Will you away. two stop it, That's please? Right. You're acting like spoiled children. Please, I know how much you love each other. What? No, I'm not staying out of this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Dr. Merrick has the results of the test. He wants to see everybody in the lounge. Let's go. Merrick, I would like to know what's happening with Mason. And I have to conform to procedure, Miss Wayne, right? Well, I didn't just walk in off the street. I have a right to know. Well, there are others whose rights must be honored before yours. The patient's wife is here. His family is here. Those are primary relationships. The patient and I have a daughter together that isn't even a year old. Now, is being the mother of his child primary enough for you? All right, Doctor. Right, you tell us what you're doing for my son. Uh, Mr. Capwell, I'm afraid the tests have borne out my initial diagnosis. Do you have any idea why he's in a coma? Well, as you know, the accident damaged the cranial area. The blow to the head produced swelling that's causing pressure being exerted on the brain. That pressure is what's causing it. Isn't there anything you can do? Are you still going to have to well, I was hoping there was a way to alleviate the pressure surgery. That's why I ran such an extensive battery of tests. Unfortunately, the surgery is not going to be possible. Why not? Why not? The location of the pressure makes it absolutely impossible. It would be irreversible damage. All right, if you can't operate, what can you do? I'm afraid the only choice we have is to wait. Wait, what the hell are we waiting for, Doctor? Well, your son is a bit of a scope. In, um, in, in cases uh, like this... I have a whole lot of faith in me, do you? Yes, I do. I just... Well, I just know you, Mason, and I know that when you sit about... and you think, and you try to be reasonable, you can think yourself right out of doing something that you want, and... I was just really nervous waiting. Because this whole thing feels like it's just a dream, something that I just made up in my head. Well, you didn't. I love you and I'm here. With this type of thing, we generally know within 24 hours, 48 at the outside. Would you please, please spell it out for us? If your son's, uh, if your son doesn't come out of this coma within 48 hours, it's doubtful he ever will. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait a minute. There's got to be something, someone. I mean, if he doesn't come out of this thing, it's got to be some kind of new new technique, some kind of surgery, radiation, laser surgery. I heard about that. Not for this condition. I'm sorry, but we're not facing a lot of possibilities here. And it's important you realize the seriousness of that. Mrs. Capwell, do you know if your husband had a living will? What? What? You might have seen it in his, in his, in the form of a card in his wallet. What? What are you talking about? I'm sorry to be so blunt. Believe me, I'm hoping for the best, Mr. Capwell. But if your son hasn't left any instructions, the decision may eventually have to be made by one of you, whether to keep him alive on machines or, or let him die. Already talking about pulling the plug? What kind of sadistic quack are you? I said I hope it wouldn't come to that. But it's important that you understand the implications. Now, let's you understand something. With one phone call, I get the best specialist in the world here. If I find out that you botched this treatment and my son's diagnosis, which I imagine you already have, you will find it hard-pressed to find a third-world country to practice in. I took the precaution of anticipating your response, Mr. Capwell. I faxed the results of the CAT scan and other tests to Dr. Armbruster in San Francisco. I'm sure you're aware of his reputation. I wanted a second opinion myself. You can call him if you like. He's agreed with my diagnosis. I'm not accepting it. 
Well, any, any decision about the patient's treatment is not yours look, to make, what Mr. What gives Shepard? you the power to tell me what Your I... son's wife holds that responsibility. Corey, listen to me a second. Cece, Cece, let's just... Let's just leave it alone for a few minutes until we all have time to absorb this. Dory, what do you want to do? Listen I to me, there is a plane waiting already now. We'll take Mason to L.A. He'll be there in a few hours. He can get the best medical care in the world there, please. I assure you, Mrs. Capwell, not only is there nothing more that they can do, but moving your husband now would exacerbate the pressure on the brain and cause further trauma. The decision is yours. I guess all we can do is wait. I'll be monitoring your husband very carefully. All of you will be informed of any changes. Thank you. Um, Victoria said something about my mother being here. She was here earlier. I don't know where she is now. Yeah, well, she needs to know about this. Baby, where are you going? I'm going to try to find my mother. She has to know what's going on here. But you heard, all we can do is wait. She can't do a thing. Jeffrey, Maybe just stay here with me. Mason is her son. She has to know. I'll be back. He's going to be all right. He's not going to die. He can't. I'm sorry. I want you to know I feel terrible about this. Oh, look, with, with the information you were given, you had no choice. Yeah, but it was me that gave him that information. I'm not angry with you, Kane. No, I'm just angry with myself. I... I wanted to believe you. I wanted to trust you. And I just, I, logic took over. I, I couldn't follow my heart. I, I asked too much from you. I, I went about the wrong way. No. No, I, I... We can talk about it later. Right now, no. I think we need to concentrate on finding the fox. Captain, there's an assassin loose on your ship. You got a few dependable men you could spare to help us search? Uh, right now, the entire crew is preparing the ship for docking in Mazatlan. Well, can't we delay docking until we can locate the woman we're looking for? Impossible. It's too late to board the docking. Uh, Captain, if this woman gets off this ship, it's highly likely that she's going to be successful at her mission. Now, an assassination of this level could destroy the, the peace process taking place in Central America. The only thing I can do now is alert the shore patrol, and I can make sure that nobody leaves the ship without a thorough security check. Now, after the passengers and the crew have all disembarked, then we should be able to find her. Yeah, well, the woman's not called the Fox for nothing. Once we dock, she'll be gone. Chris, what choice do we have? Or we can't search this whole ship in half an hour. Maybe we can get the lady to come to us, Kane. Let's try. Come here. Crazy accident, Mason ends up here. All we can do is work. Dory, they said that um, that if in 48 hours he doesn't come to, then what did you decide, Tori? <sighs> Kelly, I can't make that decision. I don't care what the doctor said. Mason and I are in the middle of a divorce, the divorce that he wants. I can't make the decision whether he's going to live or die. That's to be up to the family. You can't talk that way in front of him, you see, because we don't really know what he's hearing and what he's not hearing. And uh, he needs to fight right now. He needs to want to live, and he needs to know that that's what we want, too. Julia, the, of course that's what we want. All right, well, uh, he's going to be fine. I know that, and I am willing to stay here and see to it that he does. Listen, we know what you're going through. We're just trying to deal with what the doctors say. I don't say. care. Should... Sorry, what the doctors say. Now, I told you both that I am going to stay here as long as it takes. It doesn't make any difference. But no one is ever going to make a decision to allow him to die.
escape room 29 immediately. Have what's happened to the lights? Shut up. Do you know what I tell you when you stay alive? Move! Move! What do you say we uh, go back to my office? Yes, sir. Oh, TJ, TJ, you really let me down, pal. Now you see you're gonna have to come through for me right away. Well, you're gonna have to learn to walk with a limp for the rest of your life. Do you know what I'm saying to you now? did you fail to eliminate Espinoza, but you failed to erase the agent that disrupted the assignment. That's correct. I'm extremely disappointed. Certainly you didn't get your reputation from throwing away so many opportunities. Look, as far as I'm concerned, I am still on this assignment and I will complete it. You have to wait until Espinoza gets to his hacienda. Now, Castillo won't give up just because he's lost track of you for the moment. He's obviously working with Andrea now, and they both know your assignment. They'll be out to stop you. Now, are you certain no one followed you? They didn't jump overboard, if that's what you mean. Yeah, Richard, dos hombres y dos mujeres fueron vistos en las afueras del pueblo. Parecen ser las gentes que usted está buscando. So... Castillo and his friends have been spotted on the outskirts of town. You need some rest for your, from your long swim. Disappear for a while. I'll see that our visitors are taken care of. Quiero esos cuatro. Eliminados pronto. You're getting very annoyed in trying to follow you all over town. And look, I bet you can just fix one of those stones, ain't God? I'm not babysitting. I bet you for a couple of days. Hey, you understood the terms. Carlo? <clears throat> I couldn't help over hearing the shouting. You're not too happy with TJ. <laughs> just because I buy you a drink. Your business isn't my business, Well, lady. I was just concerned. Oh, concerned, huh? Well, T.J. should be very concerned because he's in way over his head. Does he owe you money? Yeah, you could say that. A nice round figure, ten grand. Oh, I didn't realize the expenses on a Well, you see, if the guy could just lay off of ponies, cards, a little bit of sports betting, just for a while, he could bring his expenses way down. Really? Really. Well, what, <clears throat> what would you say if I were willing to buy out his gambling debt from you? I think that you're out of your mind because the guy can't control his problem. I'm not the only one that he owes. He's in very deep. Then I would, I would think that uh, just getting the money would be the main object, not who it came from. <laughs> <laughs> you hit that right on. It, well... You just think about it. If you're interested, give me a call. Good night. I'm going to find you. We're going to get back to the hospital, OK, now? It's Mason. Oh, Jeffrey, what is it? Let's go. Let's go. It's funny. The guy at the rental agency said the car had just been serviced. Yeah, he also said it was full of gas. Was it Sarah? In, I don't remember. Look, I don't. Whatever her name is, I have odds that she's in this town somewhere. Marilyn? 
Darling, what does it matter? I mean, we know, we know what, what, her, what she looks like, we know she's in town, we know what her assignment is. Who, I mean, what does it matter what her name it is? It matters to me. You know, I'm sick of everybody calling her the fox. You know, the fox did this, the fox is gonna do that. I'd like to be able to call her by her name. But we can't remember her name. But I know, I've heard it. I mean, I've met her. I saw her right there in the hotel at the peace conference. She was assigned to some sort of special medical team for the occasion. Yeah, that was the perfect cover. Uh, was it Carolyn or, or, or oh, it's something? Oh, I know I've heard her name. never see that car again. Carolyn what are you, what are you trying to figure out? The fox? Yeah. Her name's Kathleen. Uh, Kathleen? Yeah, I went out with her. You went out with her? Once, yeah. Well, how was I supposed to know who the hell she was? Yeah, her great. name's Kathleen. Kathleen, great. Good, good. Well, now we can call her by her first name when we uh, tie her up and throw her away for life. If we throw her away for life, just because she's here doesn't mean we're going to find her. She's going to be laying low until Espinosa gets back. What should we do? I think we should have a drink and think about it. Kathleen. Señor, no se puede ayudar. ¿Dónde está la acción en este pueblo? Pues aquí mismo, en mi cantina. ¿Es verdad? ¿Cuántos americanos por acá? ¿Americanos? I don't know. Your friends are the first gringos I've seen here in a long time. But don't worry, I like gringuitos in mi cantina. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. Usually in a, in a town uh, this size, uh, there's someone who knows everyone who comes and goes. ¿Eres tú? Yo, no, no, señor. ¿Pero sabe qué? El Manolo. The jefe de la policía. Something happens in this town. Manolo knows. Mire, he likes whenever any gringos come into town. Manolo likes to have them tell him why they're here. Uh -huh. Entiende? Oh, yeah, yeah. And Manolo's the guy I want to talk to, huh? Excuse me, is there a payphone? Ay, chiquita, ya por la pared. Wait, who are you calling? My contact. I need to report in, and I want to find out if he knows anything about this uh, nurse of Dr. Clark's, Kathleen. You should have seen this Kathleen when, when Pearl was in the hospital after he'd been shot. I mean, she's in and out of his room. She's bringing him books and caring for him, and the whole time she's planning this assassination. Okay. It's unbelievable. What's wrong? Any luck? No, no available lines. You know, first the car breaks down, and now we can't contact anyone outside this town. If I were a suspicious woman, I'd say we'd run into a bit of trouble. I mean, Mason is lying here unconscious, and you're out there doing, what are you, you're negotiating shady deals with, with some lower form of life? Jeffrey, what are you I realized you were so judgmental. Judgmental? Mother, Mason could be dying. But don't say that. No, wait, listen, I'm just telling you what the doctor told us. Look, darling, you have to realize certain people deal with prices in a different way. I have to turn to something, anything. I just can't sit around waiting for someone to give me bad news. That guy was no ballet dancer, Mother. What are you looking for trouble? No, I, mean, You're I just don't want to hear it right now. Enough of you wrong. to stop it. I can't believe oh. you'd be standing here arguing about something so trivial. Your son is in the hospital. Doesn't it have any concern of yours that he might be in critical condition? I'm absolutely devastated at what happened to my son. But I don't need his half-sister to remind me of my maternal obligation. Yeah, yo, I think you do. And by the way, I don't particularly care for the way you just spoke to my wife. Don't mind how Kelly speaks to me. Because she has every bloody right to. Do you hear that? Uh, oh, yes, of course. I mean, anything. She, she could justify any action. I have to sit on my feet. I think we just stop this conversation here and now. Let's stop it. No more. No, no. I disagree. I mean, why should we sit on all these feelings? Why doesn't Kelly really speak up about all this resentment she's well, holding back? Well, uh, Listen to me now. I think under the circumstances, it would be best if Kelly and I moved out of the house, oh, okay? Jeffrey. No, 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 no. That's it. That's it. We need our own space Kelly, now, all right? Don't do this. Don't destroy everything that you've been doing. Mother, don't you understand? Don't you see? I'm trying to save it. What, what Merrick said with you, like it or not, you're the one that has to make a decision. Sissy, it doesn't make any sense. We're getting a divorce. So are you are still his wife. I can't make that decision. Well, who the hell is going to make it? Then? You want to tell me that? I will. You will. I love him, Cece. You know that. And you know that we have a daughter, and I want to live out the rest of my life with him. What you want is of no concern to me. Only my son is... You have no legal rights, Julia. None. Please. This is not the time to argue. We all know what Dr. Merrick said. We're all under a lot of pressure, but no decision has to be made tonight. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're right. Okay. Then let's all go home and get some rest. Yes, we'll talk in the morning. No legal decisions to be made tonight. Good.
It's always been a thorn in my side. I love him. Thank you. I didn't do it for you. No. There's really no reason why you should do anything for me. There's really no reason why you should even want to be in the same room with me. But right now, you're the only person that I can really talk to. Because I know that you love Mason. And even if you still hate me, I know you understand how much I love him. Yes. I don't want to lose him, Victoria. And no matter what happens, I want him to be with me. Please let him go. Let me take care of him. I'm just asking for you to be fair. And I don't care about the money. It's not about that. I love him. And I'm sorry that you had to get hurt in all of this. But that doesn't change how I feel. Please let him go. I need some time. But I'll think about it. Thank you. Now, you really think that the car breaking down, the phone being out... Darling, darling, I'll tell you, I think Andrea was right when she described herself as being suspicious. And in this case, I think she's a little bit overly suspicious. Yeah, you think it's coincidence? I don't think it's strange for the phone system to break down in a town like this. And I know that that fan belt was worn out when we got the car. Because it could have been arranged. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying we shouldn't keep our eyes open, but it's... Tell you the truth, I'm going to go over to this uh, Manolo's place. He's the jefe de la policia, and I'm going to see if he can give us a hand. I'll be back in a little while. I'll go with you. No, haven't you had enough excitement for one day? Not even close. Oh, I'm sure you've had enough excitement for one day. Mm, not even close. Oh, wow. Gee. <laughs> well, maybe you better stick around here and chaperone these two in order yeah. to be something hot for dinner. Yeah, well, don't be long, okay? I'm worried about you. Always. Should I go with you? No, why don't you uh, stick around here and look after our cohorts? Oh, very funny. You know, Andrea has kicked my butt at least half a dozen <laughs> times. <laughs> uh, who am I supposed to be protecting here? Quite a number on you too. Oh, yeah, thanks okay. for reminding me. I, I just don't have the, the secret agent training you guys have. <laughs> Sorry. So what do you think? What do you think we should do next? Well, I think we should head over to Espinosa's Hacienda and wait for him there. That way we can check out the grounds and make sure the Kathleen isn't there ready to shoot him when he arrives. It's not a bad idea. Yeah, well, I don't get paid for bad ideas. You know, back in school when we took Latin class together, I never thought you'd be a secret agent. <laughs> yes. Dulce et decorum et propatia glory. Don't oh, even wow. joke. Don't even joke. I must have been worse in Latin than you do. I think I need a translation. <laughs> well, can you seem to have understood what that meant? Sweet and fitting it is to die for one's country. It loses something in the translation. Wait, wait a minute. I have no intention of dying on this mission. Damn yeah, right you are. I'm going to stay right by your side and make sure it doesn't happen. Aquí están las mejor margaritas en todo México. Oh, thank you. Gracias, señor. Señorita. Well. Enjoy. <laughs> He's a jolly sort. I think he's had a few of these himself. <laughs> well, cheers. Toast. Oh, um, Come on, make to <laughs> uh, all of us and our future. Okay. Success. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ooh. Papa doesn't lie. It's great. Mm. You know, I really don't think we should be sitting around here drinking. Shouldn't we be out looking for Kathleen or helping Cruz with some of this? We can't leave until Cruz gets back, and then we've got to make sure that uh, Espinosa gets back okay. Well, Chris said he was only going to be... Eden? What? Eden! 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 It's... It's in the, the drink. Wait. Thank you. No, 
No, you shouldn't be thanking me for anything. We should have moved out of there a long time ago. Yes. I only wish it hadn't taken a situation like this to make me wise up. It doesn't matter, Faye. No, it doesn't matter. A mason does so. Right now. Look, I'm gonna go and see him now, okay? How are you holding up? I don't know. I can't help thinking about uh, Daddy when he was so sick. I know. And the machines and keeping him alive and never knowing. Thank God we kept him alive. Now he's healthy, he's strong. Look what it did to the family, Mama. Eden was obsessed with his pain and his suffering, and I remember wondering if she was ever going to be the same again. We have to take from that experience, learn from what we learned then, and apply it to this. I guess all we can do is pray right now. So no one will ever have to make that decision. We have to be strong, Kelly. Espinosa está en peligro. E esa mujer es una asesina profesional. ¿Y tú qué crees? ¿Que yo le tengo miedo a una mujer? No, 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 señor. Pero la he visto en acción. Ella es una rubia, bonita. Parece que no mataría una mosca. Pero usted lo mataría en un segundo sin hesitación. Mira, si te molesta tanto, voy a tener cuidado. Gracias. También, si es posible, uh, vamos a necesitar otra forma de transportación. Uh, nuestro carro se malogró y tenemos que ir a la hacienda de Espinosa. Ahorita en la noche todo está cerrado. Pero mañana en la mañana, le aseguro, ¿Mañana? vas a tener un carro. ¿Mañana, señor? En la mañana. Señor, ¿me entiende? Esto es importante. No estoy tomando el pelo. Yo entiendo. Ok. Bueno. Hasta mañana. Hasta mañana. Paco, ¿lo hiciste? <ríe> Buen trabajo. <ríe> Cannot believe Julia's nerves. She wants to take over everything. He shouldn't even be here. In fact, if she had left Mason alone, Dory would still be married to her. What in the world are you crying about? I mean, she's in there in a coma, and I just lost Jeffrey. What are you talking about? Jeffrey and Kelly are going to move out of the house. So, so what? It's not a tragedy. I applaud the man's moving towards independence. Well, I don't really expect you to understand your boys as you're doing around you, living with you. <laughs> Jeffrey's. Until I found Mason, it's the only source of comfort I've ever really had. I always turned to him. He was the one person I knew loved me. I'm sure he never said he didn't love you. Well, he, he seems to be deserting me at the time I, I need him most, and I don't know how I'm going to get through this thing with Mason without him. You'll get through, Pamela. You always do. You're very strong. <sighs> 
know. I've, I've lost every man I've ever loved. First you and Jeffrey. Now if I lose Mason, I, don't, I really don't know where I'm going to turn to it. I don't know what I'm going to do. Look, it's easy. I know, I know. Would you just put your arms around me? Just for a minute. my way home and I thought I'd stop in here. I'm glad you did. Well, you, listen, you're busy. I'll leave. No, 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 no. Everything, everything's okay. It's all right, yeah. Listen, I get the feeling something's wrong. Did Pamela say anything to you after I left? No. I, um, I threw her out. You asked her to leave? No, no, I, I physically threw her out the door. You threw, you did? <laughs> oh, I'd love to have seen that. Yeah, it was, it was different. Uh, look, I, I'm pushing. I am pushing you too much, and I, I tell myself I shouldn't depend on you. No, 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 listen, no, you're wrong. I love it when you depend on me. I, I, I am distracted. I, uh, I've run into a couple of business problems. TJ, you have helped me so much. Could I, could I just do something for you? Uh, lend you money? No, 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 no way, no way. I'm not going to take any money from you, and I'm not going to bore you with all my stupid problems. You have enough on those beautiful shoulders of yours right now. I am just so lucky to have you in my life right now. You know, when things are starting to push in on me, I think of you. <laughs> I gotta go home. <laughs> no, 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 why? Why do you have to go home? Well, because the, uh, Ted's there. No, that's no good. No, no, Kelly no. and Jeffrey are coming over. No sale. But, Sorry. Well, no, I have because um, uh, yeah. I have to take care of my family. Oh, the family. Yeah. Ah. Uh, I suppose um, Cece will be there. It's my husband. It's not an answer. I mean, are you, are you going there to see him? Don't you know by now? TJ, I want you. Paco, ese señor quiere una margarita? No, no. ¿Dónde se fueron mis amigos? They, they leave, they, they say they see you later, they... They'll come around. Huh. Donahue, join us for a prescription that's sure to make you smile. The cast members from one of TV's most popular shows, St. Elsewhere. Where else but on Donahue can you see your favorite doctors without making an office visit? So stay tuned to meet Dr. Mark Craig, William Daniels, Dr. Wayne Fiscus, Howie Mandel, Dr. Victor Ehrlich, Ed Begley Jr., and the rest of the staff in a candid TV appearance. Get to know the cast of St. Elsewhere a little better next on Donahue.